Today's episode is huge. You do not want to miss a minute. we got breaking news to talk about with Deshaun Watson. We've got Jason tilting live on the air. And most importantly, we got the playoff prime where we break down all the matchups across all positions, who you need to trade for right now with trade deadlines coming up. you got to win your championship, and this is the way to do it. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Wednesday episode. Jason Moore, present, accounted for, smirking as the show begins. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm my mind is blown right now at something I'm looking at. I'm just going to tease it here because I know we got we got the show open to get to, but when we get to Hungry for More, I got some stuff that's going to blow your mind. Okay. It's blowing my mind. I don't believe That's it. what you're reacting that's to. That's what I'm reacting you're to. Just- I wanted to look something up right before the show for, for our Hungry for More segment and- Mind blowing. I, I I don't believe it. Like I literally I'm looking, I'm like, this is wrong. And when I present this information here in a few minutes, and you clearly figure out why it is wrong and shame me for it, yeah. uh, we can laugh at my expense because right now my mind is blown. Right now you don't believe I what don't you believe just what saw. I am seeing. Okay, that's a That's a pretty good tease, right? That's a professional tease. Uh we have Hungry for More <laughs> on the show today. NFL news, big time NFL news to talk about. Not just the Thursday night preview, but we also have one of our favorite episodes, the playoff primer. You, uh, you want to talk about this is the episode you need because we're going to lay out the best and worst schedules, the players with them at every position, heading into kind of uh, the, the the witching hour, so to speak, of the fantasy football season, the moment – that uh, you make your push, but then you want to win the championship. You you know, look, we want to get there. A lot of you are already in the playoffs. Some of you are fighting for it, and this will matter. But if you're in there, you want a chance to win. And, uh, you know, this year's a little bit funky with the Week 13 buy situation because, I mean, I've looked at different trade options in our league, and that's really becoming a problem. Like the Week 13 buy, like trying to figure out how to navigate that week because there's so many – important players missing in week 13 do you have an important matchup personally yeah in the league oh of yeah record? huge who are you playing papa josh fantastic yeah fantastic so i play jeremy <laughs> so. yeah i know i and jeremy is uh he's he's moved on to 2024 yeah so uh i am thankful i get to play him the remainder of the season as well i did I, you know i tried to trade with him this morning that didn't go well I'm happy to hear that because you have you. Have, I'm trying to trade with you too. I know, and I'm uh, I'm up, I'm just mad at you because you're making your team very good and better and better. You just traded for a CD Lamb to stack with Dak, and probably only one of us makes the playoffs for where our teams are sitting right now. And you know, I I don't want you to get better. So yeah, well, I look, I it's exciting. It'll be fun. Uh, it will all play out, Jason. Fantasy football. I'm hungry for more wins. Fantasy football is really fun. Can I just say that? Like, it's really. I almost fun. tweeted that this morning. It's just cool. It's just like I it, almost for tweeted. The, fantasy football is supposed to be fun. Please make sure it's fun. All the ups, all the downs. It, when I get so upset and angry and full of vitriol, it just always directed at you. It's fun. It's still cool. I really Good. enjoy that being makes, mad at you. That makes me happy. Yeah. I mean, I remember last year, you made two moves that I knew were my death, and they led to your championship, and mm. they were the trade for Devonta Smith, and they were the trade for Dalton Schultz, and you made both of those moves with, with great conviction. And I won the and, championship with it, and now that's how I feel about you and your stupid Dak CD stack. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. The big news today we'll talk about is going to impact a lot of fantasy players, myself included. A reminder, drop it like it's hot. Today's waiver day, so those are going to go through soon in our league, and they've already gone through in yours. Make sure you check who's been dropped. Uh, you're going to have uh, some bi-week players that are probably hitting the waiver wire that you can pick up for the stretch run. 
A reminder of the Dynasty Podcast. Jason, you were on it this week. You did a Trade of Palooza episode with Matthew Betts and Kyle Borgannoni. Yeah, I mean, people love uh, episodes where there are trade for and trade away candidates. That's what we're dealing with, and we're dealing with it from a Dynasty perspective. Really valuable show this time of year if you want to have some uh, some targets. Yeah, so check that out. That is the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty Podcast. Comes out weekly. New episode this morning. Uh, so when you get done with this show and whatever magic is coming in the Hungry for More section, you can turn to that one uh, for the rest of your work day. And it is one week until the Megalodon episode. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. It's going to be so long. It's going to be a big one. There are no buys for Thanksgiving. So there will be football and pumpkin pie, and I will be very happy with that on Thursday. All right, let's do it. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. I just realized the name similarities between our two Hungry for More candidates today. Oh, I, just thought they, that was... I don't even know your your name. Okay, well, I look. I'm, should should you go first because you teased it already, or should I go first to prolong the tease? I'm going to go first because I'm, right, I'm just so excited. I can't tease it out anymore. My hungry for more should be obvious. I'm starving. I've been fasting. I've been fasting for five weeks. It was a forced fast. A forced fast, and I am hungry for Devon Achan back in my life, baby. He's so good, and it's going to be a real hard decision this week of first week back. You Do you put him in your lineup? Do you not? But. I want to play a game without a drop that unexpected called Who Has More Fantasy Points Since Week 3? Keep in mind, Devon Achan has not played in five weeks. So, so his total, total games played not, is four games, and really it's three it's, because one was a 10% snapshot. Right, so don't look at anything there. Don't oh, look okay, at his don't, stats. Don't right. look at his production. Don't remind yourself, okay? okay. So... I just want to play. No way to validate if this is true. Got it. Right, 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 right. You can, you can, uh, the producers keep me honest here. Since week three, so including the, so the last eight weeks, five of which he has not played, who has more fantasy points? I'll start a little bit easy here. Who has more fantasy points, Devon Achan or Devin Singletary? That's Achan. It is. How about Devon Achan or Tony Pollard? Well, uh, you wouldn't have this segment without that being a chan. That's that right. Is, he has yeah. scored more points since week three than Tony Pollard has. How about Devon A. Chan or Saquon Barkley? Who has scored more total fantasy without points? Without this segment being laid out the way it is, I would have assumed Saquon. It is Devon A. Chan. Uh, how about uh, Alexander Madison? It's A. Chan. How about Najee Harris? It's A. Chan. How about Ramondre Stevenson since week three? who has not missed any games, it's Devon Achan. How about B. John Robinson? Now we're just getting silly. Now it's getting silly. How about Joe Mixon, Derrick Henry, Isaiah Pacheco, Hen Jameer Hen Gibbs? Henry? Henry? Brees Hall. Come on. Or Devon Achan, who hasn't played in five weeks. Who has more total fantasy points? It's Devon Achan. I'm hungry. For more Devon Achan. Okay. <laughs> you got a I mean, you got a three courser in week three. Yeah. You got forty nine fantasy points on the, the week heard around the world that is gonna define to, this season. To remind everyone of just how insane his three games, his basically his only three games of his career were. He is averaging so like Ken Walker over this course of time, who who has scored more fantasy points than Devon Achan. Ken Walker's averaging 14.3 fantasy points per game. That's that's really good. Uh, Alvin Kamara, who's way ahead of him, is averaging 16.9 fantasy points per game. Devon Achan in those three games averaged 31.9 fantasy points per game. Every time he touched the ball, it was a chunk play. And so I, I, it's one of those things where I have the question. Okay. I have a follow-up. Hey, we're all hungry for more Devon HN. I'm personally hungry for him next week, not this week. Right, right. Because I have to play the HN manager. And oh, I, and I am, yes. Look, the matchup this week is a huge issue. <laughs> it's 
So I am. Are they the Raiders? Um, yeah. I mean, it's a top matchup for Devon Achan this week. He's playing. Who's he playing? Raiders. The Raiders. Yeah, oh, the Raiders. Sweet mercy. So, and it's at home, but we don't. The window's been open, but we don't have reports yet, right? We don't know if he's going to be active for this game. The last thing I had heard from McDaniel's was um, things are going according to plan. Okay, so Kyle's confirming. We don't know for sure. So I have I have said my prayers. Yeah, and I am praying to avoid. Now I I was actually shocked at the Gibbs one because Gibbs's last three games are twenty three, twenty seven, and twenty five fantasy points. Right. Which um, two of those three, you know, those numbers would have beaten two of Devon A. Chan's three games. But that forty nine point three is. It's something special what he did against Denver. Yeah. So producers, have you held me accountable? Was what was my math? And everything I don't see correct? anything wrong. I was I was doing a little bit of Just checking. Insane. Yeah. So look, who's your hungry for more? What a loser that guy's going to be. Here's the question. Okay. Yeah. No, mine's a yours is a Devon. Mine's a Devon. But my question was going to be like, realistically speaking, do you want Gibbs or Achan rest of season? Because. Raheem Mostert is a fundamental – literally, Raheem Mostert is the number one in the NFL in yards per carry still. So Raheem Mostert is a really, really talented player. Jeff Wilson's back. He's not being involved that much. Not no. worried about Jeff Wilson. But when you look at the remaining schedule, if you just look at the playoffs, is Denver, Minnesota, Dallas for um, – oh, that's for Gibbs. Uh, for – yeah, it's, it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal for – and that's what this show is, but it's brutal for Devon Achan because it's the Jets – Dallas, Baltimore. That's troubling. Yeah, I mean, because the Jets... Because you're looking at, like, what's the potential for 30? And I, I don't know if those are 30 games. The Jets are not great against the run right now. They're unbelievably great in the, the secondary. You can't pass to any wide receivers on them. Barely can pass to tight ends. Um, but the running game isn't isn't that great. Dallas can be run on. Baltimore's tough. That's, it's that's on the road. Tough so, yeah, I mean... Championship. So, league. what's your answer? I think because of the current injury, I would rather have Gibbs right now. I'm, I'm more confident in his role this week and his health this year. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where I, I want both. That's where I'd be, and I would want both. And and I look if I'm praying for Devon Achan to take an extra week out of pure selfish motivation this this week, I am also praying that Damian Pierce takes another week because I am hungry for more career highs from Devin Singletary. Thirty carries last week career high 150 yards career high played 81 percent of snaps was the running back three was an exceptionally important player for a lot of fantasy teams and he plays the arizona cardinals this week at home and i will be checking the the twitter sphere and all the beat writers and all the news to find out the practice habits of damian pierce this week now i have both and i would play singletary if pierce was active this week. Yes. Uh, the matchup is very good. There's a, a, a decent probability they're out in front. But I am hungry for more opportunity for Singletary. They have a really good offense. They're playoff bound right now in Houston. And, uh, you know, it's it's weird. You get to this time of year. And I, I've been, unfortunately, way too deep into fantasy football trade universe over the last 15 or so hours. I'm talking like levels that are embarrassing. Oh, I am well aware. Uh, the amount of trade offers and conversations and and trade partners that yeah. you have, yeah. like you have, I have some kind of transmitted. I disease. have I have seven trade offers out right now, and I made a big trade last night. And my wife, she had some stuff going on last night, and that was really bad for me because I could sit in my bed and just I was looking at playoff rosters and I was looking at. Uh, players to trade for and what i realized and where i'm getting with this and i'm sorry listeners for taking so long is that you do get to this part of the year and you look at people who won championship last year and there are the singletaries of the group you could sit here at the trade deadline and say well i don't like devin singletary's name relative to i don't know tony pollard's name but last year you had jerick mckinnon who literally set the league on fire for a three-week span and didn't do anything before that. Mm -hmm. And there are players out there where, like, you, everybody wants to, like, kind of get ready for the playoffs, and so you want to build your list of names on your team, and sometimes it's going to be the move you didn't make or the player you went into the playoffs with. And I'm not saying Singletary is going to have long-term, 
uh, top 10 value, him specifically. But there are going to be some names like that. There always are names like that um, every single year. There will be a, a, a player who hasn't really been discussed at this point yet who is sitting on waivers who will help people win championships because it happens every single year. That's why people that – you know, if you want to, if you want to win your championship, the, you're, you're obviously you're listening right now. But the people that keep listening to shows like this, keep playing through the season, getting the waiver wire uh, gems towards the end of the year, they just win more championships. It's just true. I now only have four trade offers out because uh, three of them were actively rejected by Al Borland. Wow. Thank you, Al. Wow. Uh, collusion. Collusion. <laughs> collusion. <laughs> Uh, that was Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Get almost almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. Defense? uh uh Deodorant? Yep. Yeah, you can do that. Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. Let's uh, Look, the hits keep coming. Big news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. It, it could have been coincidence that Jason was the one that broke this news to our, our Slack channel this morning, but I choose to believe it was somehow you created the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I made this happen. Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson will undergo season-ending shoulder surgery. An MRI revealed a displaced fracture that will require sur I didn't even realize it was displaced. That's insane that he played through that game. Uh, he has a high ankle sprain as well. He's done. Like He's not playing another down for the Browns. He played through this injury and the high ankle sprain and completed every pass in the second half and led them to a win. Uh, wait, what? Yeah, are you reading what uh, Jordan what? Schultz? What? Are you reading what Jordan Schultz is reporting? Yeah, is this brand new news? Breaking news within the breaking news? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's crazy. I have The Browns are planning on starting Dorian Thompson Robinson. And I am planning on starting the Pittsburgh Steelers DST. Un totally related to that news. And the reason Andy is freaking out here is because one of his important pieces on his roster is Amari Cooper, who RIP. Because if Dorian Thompson Robinson is the quarterback, you cannot play Amari Cooper. Not with confidence. I was going to make the point here that while Watson has been subpar, he has been measurably better than P.J. Walker in every type of metric. It's true. But P.J. Walker has been measurably better than Dorian Thompson-Robinson in every metric. I mean, the only thing that I can say to the defense of Dorian Thompson-Robinson is he played one game, and he did it unexpectedly. Right. However, what the heck, man? This is not just a problem now for Amari Cooper. Yes, that is a red alert. Now, Amari Cooper under P.J. Walker had a higher target share than he even did under Deshaun Watson, 25%. So you can look at that and say, look, they played tougher matchups in those weeks that P.J. Walker was the quarterback than they did when when Watson was. And you could say, look, he took his shots with Cooper. Cooper comes down with some tough catches. He'll be fine. But Dorian Thompson-Robinson opens up a whole new universe of pain for fantasy managers because he will run the football, mm -hmm. which will eliminate running opportunities. And and now I am now I am worried about Jerome Ford because – this offense, if it can't get first downs, is going to be a huge problem. Now they're going to be able to play great defense. They're going to run the football. But this is this is really red alert. And here we are with another quarterback injury. Yeah, I mean, in... in and Josh Jobs was their backup to start the year. What are you doing, Cleveland? In week three, uh, I'm sorry, week four, was when we saw Dorian Thompson-Robinson have the kind of unexpected surprise start um, in that game. He completed 53% of his passes. Three of uh, the incompletions were actually completions to the other team. Uh, three interceptions, no uh, touchdowns. The team scored three total points that game. Now, granted, oh, I, it, I was, remember it was against it. Baltimore. Okay, and and at the time, we thought Baltimore's defense was a little banged up and we that they should have been able to. Baltimore has proven that their defense is just elite this year. They're one of the best. They are technically the second-best defense um, in the league, statistically speaking. So, and he didn't get the practice, the starting practice that week. So, things are going to be better for Dorian Thompson Robinson <clears throat> than they were for that week four start. But he is not good enough 
to be good for fantasy assets. I mean, I would be scared of every Brown until proven otherwise. He rushed for 647 yards for UCLA, 12 touchdowns on the ground in 2022. Completed 70% of his passes, 3,000 yards, 27 touchdowns. He was he was certainly a, a special player in college, but uh, th it's a tall task now. Yeah. It's going to be very, very interesting. Goodness, I did not. I didn't see that DTR news until just now. I'm so happy to hear that. That was that was entertaining for me to watch. I don't know what to think right now. I would need to end the show. I got trades to make. Oh, no, please stop it. Justin Fields expected to start in Week 11. Should be back out there. Should be a seven week trial for Justin Fields for Chicago because they are primed to potentially have the top pick in the draft. Well, it's not just a trial. It's a showcase. Sure. Right, because they, yeah, both. Will, they will either be keeping him and trading what is almost guaranteed the number one pick. I mean, maybe Carolina gets the number two pick, but they've got a top two pick coming their way from the Carolina Panthers. Um, so this is we either will use that pick and, and, and draft Caleb Williams or whoever they want and, tra and then look to trade fields, or they're going to say, Fields did so good at the end of this coming season that we are going to trade the pick. So TBD, but they're going to want him to do his best to showcase him. The matchup against Detroit this week is pretty good for – it's not a bad matchup for quarterbacks. Okay. Pat Frymuth, 21-day window open. They expect him to be back out there on the field this week for the Steelers and the Jets, Jason. The Jets have waived Michael Carter. Oh, yeah. Which clears a pathway for Israel – a banacanda. A banacanda don't want none unless you got runs, huh? Um, Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I, I really liked Izzy um, as a prospect this year. Uh, very speedy, uh, still weighty running back. That being said, it's really bothered me to see third downs and two-minute drills with Michael Carter there catching a lot of dump-offs. We there, There's been games where... Uh, in garbage time, there's four or five checkdowns to Michael Carter. They should be going to Brees Hall. I do think some of those are going to Dalvin Cook. I know you don't want to hear that, I but know, I do I think know. it's going to happen. Uh, uh, but it is better to clear the way. Yeah, it, 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 what I know is that it won't go to Michael Carter anymore because nope. he's not on the team. Uh, yeah, he had such a good rookie season, 4.3 a carry, looked really good last year, not good. This year, only eight attempts and ruined more of a player to ruin others than anything himself. That was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break. Back with the TNF preview and our playoff primer. I am still reeling. That is shocking. Oh, the, the, the DTR news. Mm. I mean, I guess there is the, like, PJ Walker is definitely the devil you know. Like, there's not a... There's not a world that he's much better than what we've seen. And there is the chance that DTR, because he's a rookie, because he has a great pedigree, because he'll have a week of practice, because they have a great defense, because they have good running backs. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a world that their offense functions pretty well. Like we said, Watson was not a good player. But there, I'm a bit thunderstruck. Yeah, bro. Yeah. There, there is there's, uh, certainly a world where by the end of this season, Amari Cooper is better with DTR than he would have been with Walker. Walker's very, very capped. Yeah, that that was my my thought. All right, TNF preview. Thursday night breakdown. Well, we have a rematch from week two. The Cincinnati Bengals this week at five and four travel to Baltimore to take on the seven and three Ravens. The Ravens just lost at home to Deshaun Watson and these Browns, or those Browns. Baltimore minus four is the line on the DraftKings Sportsbook. The over-under is 46. Baltimore won 27-24 in week two. And, yeah, I mean, this is uh, this was a really, really tough one for me to handicap. I was going through this week's matchups, and, like, right out of the gate, this game is very interesting. Like, now, if, if, if you are the one handicapping it, would it, would it be handicapping? It would be handicapped. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's nice. That's uh, nice. I like it. Because to be fair, you're you're 
I don't want to toot your horn too much, but you're, well, you're welcome you're, to. You're, <laughs> you're, you're pretty good at handicapping most of these games. So um, I I can tell you what I picked, and I'm not I, – I picked Baltimore. I'm confident in Baltimore. And the reason being is them losing two at home yep. seems like a non-John Harbaugh type of thing. But we could get a really, really fun, exciting, not last week Thursday night football game. All four AFC North teams are in the playoff picture. The Ravens, the Steelers, the Browns, and the Bengals. Bengals are the only team not currently in, and they're on the bubble, but they're the Bengals. Like, we we expect them to be in the mix towards the end of the season. Uh, Burrow and Lamar, I mean, you're not you're not sitting either of those guys down in this matchup, right? Mm -mm, no, you're not. And, and I know that Lamar Jackson has gone back and forth on good games and bad games. In fact, more bad than good right. for fantasy purposes. Mark Andrews torches the it's Cincinnati three, Bengals. It's been a three three game bad stretch for Lamar actually. Yes, but I I think it, I think it gets right for fantasy. I think Lamar has a good game on the back of Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews has the last 3 games against Cincinnati, scored a touchdown in each one of them, two different games, eight receptions, one of them 125 yards. You've so, been hammering every tight end that plays the Bengals, so you got to be really confident with Exactly. Mark Andrews Yep, and um, so. but that's kind of where like you get to the end of the line in the pass catchers, though, don't you? For Baltimore, I mean, Bateman's not a consideration. Beckham is is banged up, and Zay Flowers is I'm not not really valuable unless no. you're in a like two, two points per reception league. No, I'm I'm not really looking to start any of the other pass catchers. I do think you can easily start Gus Edwards. Yeah, and would you Ke play Gus or Mitchell? I would play Gus Edwards over Keaton Mitchell because I think if they get around the goal line, they'll be able to score touchdowns. Keaton Mitchell just might not have enough work, but I do think you can start Keaton Mitchell this game. He's going to get more and more work, um, even though last week he only had three carries turned into 39 yards and a touchdown because he's got that breakaway speed. Cincinnati has not been good at stopping the run. Uh, I believe This is a bus versus a Ferrari. Like, if you went to buy one of them, you'd yeah. be really tempted to get that Ferrari. But it's a lot more dangerous. Yeah, you, you don't even need to buckle up in a bus. No, you, you don't even put the seatbelt on. Yeah. Are there even seatbelts on buses? Uh, maybe for the driver. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But... We love one person on this bus. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. And, and like, you know, Keaton Mitchell is just a small sample size. And it's a divisional game, and Cincinnati's going to be ready to play, I think. Yeah, um, on the other side, on, on Cincinnati's side, this is a really tough defense. The The Ravens are top 10 across the board against every single position um, if you adjust for schedule. They don't give up a lot. And so, like I, I can tell you right now, Mike, Mike is out of town, our champ, champ, champ team. We have the Joe Burrow v. Uh, Kyler Murray D decision on our dynasty you're going spot. Kyler Murray I'm going Kyler okay yeah I mean uh not having T Higgins which he, they're not going to have is a big deal uh because you really need playmakers to to be able to make their mark against Baltimore and you need Jamar Chase to be able to have somebody to take some of the attention off of him and you know Trent Irwin and Tyler Boyd are not going to be able to do enough I think to to give chase the opportunities that he needs no Tyler Boyd would be an okay flex option you know Boyd over any of the Baltimore options I would yeah so mix in chase Boyd is a flex end of story end of story I I uh I'm not excited to start Joe Burrow this week I think there are probably better options out there that's it's tough to would bench. you go Sam Howe yeah I think I would I, uh let me look at my rankings here you, I feel like there is definitely a cap when you face Baltimore and Baltimore. Yep, uh, and without T. Higgins, I would. I, I've got Sam Howell two spots ahead of Joe Burrow. That's. A, I mean, I think that's going to be hard for people to do. I think most of them are going to go down with the ship because would, Joe Burrow is just, you know, that kind of guy. But I think it might be the right play. Uh, final, final, dicey one. Would you play Joe Burrow or Justin Fields? Not Fields on the first game back. No, I play Burrow. I'm worried. I'm worried because Fields' injury was a thumb. Right, on it, was his a it was a grip hand. strength issue, and so it's like, okay, you're going to come back, and it's not. It's not like Justin Fields does it every week when he's healthy. It's a real, like your floor is lower. I think I your floor is lava. 
with yeah, Justin I think, Fields. I think the floor is super low for both guys, though. Like, if it becomes a bad game for Joe Burrow, which primetime Joe Burrow is usually going to be great. Yeah, uh, that's why I'm staying there. Mm, man, in Baltimore. You did have the, the Deshaun Watson and the Browns put up 34 points last week in Baltimore. Yeah, but Deshaun Watson, I mean, that was a defensive score, and yeah. I don't think Deshaun Watson was overtly great. He had like no. 20 fantasy points. No, no, you're right, yeah. But if he can do 20, Burrow can do 25. Okay. I'm staying with Burrow. All right. Playoff Primer. All right, I, I'm i excited to talk through these names. Almost, almost uh, I'm excited, and yet it will be you and I opening up. <laughs> you don't want to give away your beliefs. It will be you and I secrets. opening up about some situations here. Yeah, this is like we're playing chess. Would you consider clicking accept on either of my trade offers before this segment? No. Okay. Um, that's a shame. Last year, I mentioned it. Jarek McKinnon was the RB two from week 14 on here. Were some other league winners from last season that highlight what we're looking at. Kirk cousins was the quarterback five, three and six from weeks 14 through 16 last year. Huge for fantasy players. Brady had a huge week 17. CD lamb finished the year with four straight top 15 performances. Uh, George Kittle had a monster final, uh, run. And then James Connor. Mm hmm. The, the whole second half. He of was the, the year. RB six from week eleven on. So here we go. Let's talk about quarterbacks. The best and worst schedules for quarterbacks. Right now, <laughs> I I just... what is, so first of all, let's just come right out and say what you don't want to say. Just I'm putting you on the spot. What is it that you don't want me to be aware of? That it's, some, it's nothing that you're know. not aware of. It's right. just going to drive home. I look in trade negotiations in a league. Everything is about leverage. And sometimes leverage is built on what's said out loud versus what is said in secret. And so, look, we're going to get to running backs later, and it's very evident. Like, I'm coming after Austin Eckler on your team. I'm the, the only buyer left in the league. Mm -hmm. And you want to give up Saquon Barkley. And they and, and, you, and Saquon has a bad schedule, and Eckler has a good one. And there's a reason why I'd offer second-round draft picks along with Saquon to go do it, and I'm looking long-term. I like, I made a big bet yesterday, and... You know, I would have rather have negotiated with you last night. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Dak Prescott has one of the best playoff schedules. He, yes. He faces Buffalo. We know Buffalo has been uh, troubled on the defensive side. It is in Buffalo. So that one I will illustrate. Like, you could have weather. Like, That's fair. that is a weather week, potentially. But then he goes to Miami in a shootout extraordinaire. He plays at home against Detroit in championship week. Dak it's it's more than these three games because every game pre, prior to these three games is is amazing for Dak. Yeah, this is no weeks off. This is why uh, we we've highlighted Dak for a while. He was Mike's second half sleeper. There isn't really a better passing schedule in the entire league from now until the end of the season, but it does continue so long as that Buffalo game is not a, a weather issue and it turns into a snowball. The playoff weeks are just as good as the weeks from here till then. And I know I'm biased because I have picked up and I'm playing Dak, and he's like the centerpiece of a couple leagues. Listener League, I've got him. That's trying to earn everybody another spot in the Listener League. But I don't know if I would accept any trade for Dak right now, quarterback to quarterback. Oh, yes, you would. I don't think I would. Yes. I mean, maybe would. with keeper stuff considering, but I no, like. Redraft, you're telling me. If I, I've got Jalen Hurts. No, I know. You're saying you would he rather might, have Dak than Jalen He Jaylen might be Hurts. the only one that I would do that because Jalen Hurts is in this category. Jalen Hurts has a, an amazing playoff schedule, Seattle, the Giants, and Arizona. Jalen Hurts is the one that I would waver on and, and I probably would fold and do, but not maybe now that I have CeeDee Lamb. Like I might ride the Dak, CeeDee Lamb stack into the playoffs. Kyler Murray, really tough first week of the playoffs, but he's on rosters as often a second quarterback option. So if you can play somebody, he plays San Francisco in week 15 and I and a week 14 by. So you need another quarterback for maybe those two games, but then Chicago Philly? He's a perfect bye week. Like if you are on the way to the playoffs with a bye and you're not even going to play week 1 to to go Chicago and Philly in your championship weeks, it's a really really nice schedule and you would presume those will be his healthiest, his best, you know, he's going to be more in the system 
more recovered from the ACL, more confident in in everything. The, more Zach Ertz on the roster. Gross. I know that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> But Kyler's got a great schedule. Brock Purdy and Justin Fields do as well. Uh, you don't want Fields in the first week of the playoffs because it's Cleveland on the road. That would be a disaster. Mm -hmm. I also have Cleveland's defense. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, man, they're going to be so good. Uh, but then Brock Purdy plays Arizona. Then you don't really want him against Baltimore. But you could do it. And then he plays Washington. Brock Purdy is a name that is worth bringing up because I, I don't know how much respect he's getting in fantasy circles you know he he doesn't run a lot but he's been very very good for fantasy football um in the three game stretch where he didn't have Debo Samuel he was seven points 12 points 18 points and so I think you know he's been dropped he, they had the bye week after that um I I you know you picked him up off of waivers and I traded for him but in all the games with Debo Samuel he's hitting 20 points reliably at the quarterback position um, you know, this, this last week he had three passing touchdowns, uh, 300 passing yards. He's been very good. So you combine that with a great playoff schedule for quarterbacks. And I think he's probably the sneaky ad of the group. Like everyone wants Dak, Jalen Hurts, Kyler. You're just, you, you, you but, probably can't Purdy, get them right now. Purdy is the, uh, you know, I won a championship with Alex Smith a couple years ago mm -hmm. or not a couple anymore. Yeah. I mean, a, a long time ago. Uh, because I had a major talent go down, and, and it was like Smith had a nice run. Purdy's got a pretty good floor in every game. Yeah. When he has all of his weapons healthy. And then Justin Fields is the wild card that I you – know, look, I, you could win a championship with him. I think You could Justin, lose one with him. I think Justin Fields is going to win people championships. I really do. Well, let's put – you know, the good schedules aren't really illustrative until you contrast them with the bad. Okay. And what you want to do there because Tua has the worst schedule – of basically any quarterback. The Jets, you don't pass on them. Then Dallas. Uh oh. Yeah. Then Baltimore. Like I give me three teams that I don't want to face in those three games, and that you did it. Yeah. Um two is gonna get a lot of people to the playoffs too. So this is going to be a playoff quarterback, and that is where um I think he lines up perfectly with Brock Purdy. If you're the two a manager, just go go acquire Brock Purdy. You can absolutely acquire Brock Purdy in a trade if he's not just sitting on waivers right now. Um, combine those matchups because the, the two worst matchups for Tua are the first and third week of the playoffs, and those are the great matchups for Brock Purdy against Arizona and Washington. Right. So you can kind of play the schedule and combine those two players together. I think if you ride Tua through the playoffs, you're not going to win your championship. He, he was – it's tough because that's one of the reasons I traded him away was the thought of if I make the playoffs, I'm not going to want to play him in those games, but I will feel – pot committed to do so when you look at other guys trevor lawrence he's off your roster bad schedule cj stroud tennessee cleveland tennessee what are your thoughts on stroud because i i've seen teams now that have stroud trade away their other option because they feel confident enough in cj stroud yeah so it's it's funny that obviously two games the, this is going to be a huge uh, playoff theme is the texans v titans because they play each other twice in these three game fantasy playoffs so, like, for Derrick Henry, running on the Texans, it's going to be great. For wide receivers against Tennessee, it's a great matchup. Total quarterback fantasy points, Tennessee hasn't really given up a lot. They don't give up a lot of uh, rushing yards to quarterbacks. But I I'm kind of in the middle. I don't, I don't view this as a terrible schedule for C.J. Stroud. I know, statistically speaking, it is not good for quarterbacks. But I think Stroud's going to be able to throw on Tennessee. Sam Howell, Joe Burrow, tough ends to the season. Burrow has Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Kansas City. Statistically speaking, that's not great. I'm actually not that worried about that. I don't think the Minnesota-Pittsburgh matchups are ones I would care about. Kansas City in the final week, I don't know if I care about that either just because the nature of Joe Burrow is like these could be some pretty high – that could be a high-scoring game. Are you more worried than I am? I am more worried than you are. Uh, not in the first two weeks. Joe Burrow. So we're, we're talking about fantasy schedules. It's important for us to say what I'm sure everyone listening hopefully already knows, but like you don't just bench your studs because they're in great matchups. When you've got a real stud, a great player, they're usually matchup proof. Uh, there's a reason why they're great because other NFL teams and players can't stop them. 
But the Kansas City Chiefs have proven to me this year so many good quarterbacks have played against them, and no one's gotten it done. I don't think Joe Burrow gets it. Joe Burrow's had plenty of bad games this year, and I don't think he gets it done in championship week. Running backs with great schedules. Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler plays the Las Vegas, oh. Buffalo, and Denver. I mean, you you can't get much better than that. That's the 32nd defense against running backs, the 27th and the 22nd defenses against running backs. The The only player that I think might have as good a schedule is Bijan Robinson and the Falcons. They're playing Carolina, Indianapolis, and Chicago. But Chicago has gotten much, much better recently mm -hmm. um, against against the run. So, But Eckler, Bijan, those schedules are perfect. Where are you with Derrick Henry? Because the schedule, we've talked about it since week one. Houston, Seattle, Houston for the final three weeks of the season. Does Derrick Henry have a final you know, uh, mark to make on the fantasy universe? Yeah, for sure he does. Derrick Henry, uh, th these are these are – Winnable games, but they're also um, easy rushing matchups. Uh, so I, I think Derrick Henry is is going to be a league winner. In fact, right now off of a really terrible game for Derrick Henry, he, he, he only had 11 carries this last week for 24 yards, scored two and a half fantasy points. If you ever want to try to trade for D Derrick Henry, now is a good time. Um, this week they're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are a pretty tough matchup. Um, so maybe if your if your trade deadline goes an additional week, if you don't have to make the move now, after next week, if he puts up two bad performances in back to back weeks, I, I I would I would pick him up. His run after this next week is pretty much great. The rest of the season, you've got Carolina, Indy, Miami, Houston, Seattle, Houston. It's perfection. Jerome Ford. Jerome Ford has a Chicago, Houston, and then the Jets matchup to end the season. He was a trade for candidate uh, mentioned on the Dynasty podcast today. And um, I, I personally think that he he has shown that this team, that he's their guy. Like uh, over 64% of snaps for two straight weeks. Ran for over 100 yards last week against Baltimore on the ground on 17 carries. Uh, very explosive, very fast guy. And uh, could be a league-winning type of uh, candidate. Yeah, and, and Jerome Ford isn't going to cost a ton. Obviously, we've got to wait and see what Dorian Thompson-Robinson does for this offense. That makes me less bullish. But he has been good. Jerome Ford has looked great. The team is relying on him. They, the, If they're going to win games, which is obviously their goal, it's going to come from their defense and running game. So that means Jerome Ford is all of a sudden the center of this offense – um, we actually highlighted him on the Dynasty podcast as well as a good Dynasty asset to try to trade for that might be a little bit s sneakier long-term play than people are giving him credit for. Give me some of the worst running back schedules out there. Nope, 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 nope. I know you want to skip it, but we need to bring up the Steelers. The Steelers have a very good... Oh, okay, yes, Jalen Warren and Najee Harris. No, I don't want to skip it. Okay. Uh, I traded for Jalen Warren recently... Najee and Jalen Warren, like the offensive line is moving people right now. They play Indianapolis, Cincinnati, and then Seattle. The only negative there is that unlike Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt, which is a – that is a starter and a backup slash goal line, Najee and Warren are very much a split. They are. Um, you know, it was like Jalen Warren got announced as the starter. Hooray, you ran out of the tunnel. And I think Najee had the first five carries. <laughs> so th th these – and they're both running well. Like if, if Najee was – running poorly right now and Warren was on fire I think I'd be like dying to get him and dying to play him but uh the schedule's great so I think both will be in play Indianapolis Cincinnati Seattle so uh both of them this is how they're winning they're six and three and Najee he did it last year sucked the first half and was great the second half if he maybe it gets colder and defenses get tired Saquon Barkley has uh one of the worst schedules for the running back position he also has a week 13 bye, New Orleans, Philadelphia, Los Angeles. He also has no quarterback or hope. He's all alone. Yeah. Um, Saquon, so you have Saquon in the league of record. He you is. Are, you are shotgunning offers to yes. trade him away because this is a very bad schedule. And while his It's floor, hard to see a, a ceiling for him. Yeah, while his floor is high, 
it's probably you, – you pretty much expect in these three games you're going to get 10 points. And that's not th- terrible, but that's not winning you a championship against the best teams in your league. So Saquon's name and his current run has been good. I think you're right to try to go try to do like Saquon Barkley plus something for Eckler. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, in your league, I have Eckler. I, I'm probably not doing that deal. So, but in what about a couple twos? Uh, oh man, maybe. Don't do don't do not offer me that. Saquon, do not offer me that. And I'm serious. Saquon and a couple two. I'm gonna go no, send that. Through. No, I'm gonna no. go send that. Through. Oh my gosh, no. I'm just go ahead and click this button right here. Really, really don't. No, uh, I, I really, really will because oh I want you to know that you turn this trade down at the end of. Oh, I'll throw up. Hold on, hold on. Let me please send don't. It. No, I mean just. Talk about what you're thinking and what I'm, you're feeling. I am thinking click, click that as a 500 click, record, click, click with click, no draft capital next year, it would be insane to not take that deal. But if I click, take that deal, I'm not and, winning the championship. And click. All right, it's sent. And so I want. Oh, this sucks. So <laughs> I guess I guess we'll deal with this. Um, <laughs> I want to win the championship. I'm the current <laughs> champ in the league of records. Sure. I, my team is very good, and I believe if I make the playoffs, I can I can win the championship. Um, I also think my upcoming schedule is winnable. Yeah. And I think. I mean, we play in a couple weeks. We play in a couple weeks, and that matchup will very likely could determine who makes the playoffs. It definitely could. And I believe our two teams have really high odds of winning the championship. Like one of us. <clears throat> one of us won't make the playoffs and one of us w- might win the championship. If I make this trade for you, my draft capital gets so much better for oh, next yeah, year. Oh yeah, you got two twos. That's what the offer I just sent through. And just for those at home, like we can't trade ones in our league. So like twos are the highest draft capital. It's they, the they're it's gold. The, it's the golden bullet. And how many do you have right now? I've got zero. Okay. I'm just I making tra- sure. I traded mine away. <laughs> but if I if I make that deal, I am saying I'm 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 putting up a white flag. And I don't think I can do that. I mean, oh. I, mean, I mean, I don't know if you're putting up a white flag. You're just hedging. I hate Andy Holloway. <laughs> I hate Andy Holloway. Kenneth That's- Walker, Damian Pierce, and Singletary. Joe Mixon and James Conner also have very difficult end of season schedules. It's relevant because the Cardinals not only have a week 14 bye, but they, you know, he's a target. Like, I think he's. I think he's out there, and a lot of people are targeting James Conner, but San Francisco, Chicago to start the playoffs, and then Philadelphia for the championship. Maybe this isn't the year for James Conner to win you a title. No, I don't think so. What you saw last year at the end of the season was, even though the team was bad, and they lost Kyler Murray, and they lost the games, because of necessity, James Conner became everything. He touched the ball nonstop. It was great for fantasy football. This season, it seems like the exact opposite is going to happen. It seems like Kyler's going to be back. They're going to be able to throw the ball. These matchups are actually good for throwing on, like Philly in championship week. They're one of the worst teams at, at stopping quarterbacks and wide receivers. They're, they're just – their secondary is is depleted. But you can't run on them. And so James Conner, to me, I, I think is a – is a really bad play. And even though the Chicago matchup – we've talked about this a couple times. The Chicago matchup on paper looks good. You look – and say, oh, it's a plus matchup. It's really not anymore. They have they have turned their defense around, and recently they're just not giving up a lot on the ground, which is, you know, James Conner can catch the ball, but this season he's been more of doing the groundwork than than through the air. The other conversation is with Kenneth Walker because he, he has big plays, but I just posted a tweet yesterday, and I didn't know the answer to this question before I looked it up, but Kenneth Walker's in the bottom five of yards after contact. Kind of a stat that de- he dealt with last year. Right. But he, he has big plays, but he also has a committee problem. Mm-hmm. And now we know they play Philly in the first week. of the, And Philly is the number one defense against the running back position, minus 8.2 in terms of um, whatever the – basically the, the baseline. average yeah. baseline of the opposing team, what, what the other opponent usually scores at the running back position, they will score on average eight fewer than that against the Eagles. That is not good. And so Walker Can, maybe trade high after that performance. I think Walker and Barkley are the two big name, great players who have been succeeding, who carry a lot of value in dynasty or in fantasy where you could trade them for a different running back with a better schedule. Here's a wild one, and we're going to turn to the wide receiver position and, and bring up – I'm going to do it reverse order here. Okay. 
I'm going to start with the worst wide receiver schedules because I think that's where the biggest conversation has to be had. Tyreek Hill and mm-hmm. Jalen Waddle, mm-hmm. they face the Jets. The Jets are just not – they just drag the game out and they you don't pass on them. Now, Tyreek Hill is special. But the Jets are really, really good. And then they play Dallas and then they play Baltimore. And so it's really hard for me to say that Miami's going to go into – like so far we've seen Miami – Struggle against good teams. Dallas, Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Those are concerning games. And then the Jets are a great pass defense. So is this this helpful at all to know this information about Tyreek Hill? Like, would you actually try to move him when he has been the linchpin of basically like the best player in fantasy no, for a lot. No, I wouldn't. No, this is an example. It, the the this Jets, is an example where you don't overemphasize. You it? do not overemphasize. Now, Jalen Waddle, sure, right. Jalen Waddle is more concerning to me than Tyreek. Tyreek is unguardable. It doesn't matter. Sauce Gardner, you're great. You can't guard Tyreek. Do you want to know why you can't guard Tyreek? You're a human being, <laughs> and there is not a you human need being to be some sort of that can guard alien. Tyreek Hill. So. Uh, uh, Tyreek could have a down game. Um, you know, I Tua I'm concerned with, uh, obviously, and, and you know, they are connected a little bit. The Jets' pass defense is, is great, but it just takes one play for Tyreek to be special. Would you rather have CeeDee Lamb or Tyreek Hill? I think CeeDee Lamb. You whispered that. I whispered I have that. him, actually. Yeah. Don't do um, <clears throat> have you thought about that trade offer yet? I... I'm just trying to – I'm talking to the other managers, trying to figure out how to cut you out of this league. Right. I'm just, uh, that's all I'm doing, just trying to figure out – I mean, there's a decent chance I don't even make the playoffs, ballots and You petitions. don't even need to worry about me. Well, the the way that you don't make the playoffs is me <laughs> in week 12. That's how you don't make the playoffs. That's how I make the playoffs. Not if I swap you running that. I'm sorry, listeners. I'm sorry. I, maybe you enjoy this banter, I hope. Amari Cooper, Terry McLaurin, and Jahan Dotson, that, that one's bad. And then Kirk and Ridley. Those are three wide receivers that I'm not. Here's what I'd say about the wide receiver position with bad schedules. Don't expect these guys to win you the week. Other than maybe Tyreek. Sure. But don't expect, you know, Kirk to win you the week against Baltimore or Carolina. Don't expect McLaurin to win you the week against the Jets. These are players that I think you can still put on your team as baseliners, but maybe you need to ramp up your wide receiver position in order to have enough firepower to get through the playoffs. Like you don't have to get rid of them necessarily, but I don't – look, I'm trying. Uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm trying I, with Amari Cooper. That's the one. He he is the one that I think fantasy managers will do themselves a disservice if they don't trade him away this week before you see Dorian Thompson-Robinson out there again. The playoff schedule is not good for him, and that would be with Deshaun Watson. You say, okay, whatever. It, it, it's not the – So what? So what? Who cares? Who cares? But with a rookie quarterback – in bad matchups, that's not how you win championships. So if you can trade Amari Cooper plus something for a better player, or even just you might not need to go plus something. Like, for instance, would you trade Amari Cooper for Marquise Hollywood Brown? Just straight up. Because he's been much better than Hollywood. Hollywood has a great schedule for the fantasy playoffs. I would much rather play Hollywood than Amari Cooper I mean, in I, those I'm weeks. still reacting to that news, but probably. It's weird, though, because I look – I mean, trust me. I've looked at every single player in fantasy football over the last 16 hours. I've looked at the box scores from Hollywood Brown. Because oh, yeah, I, they're gross. I was looking at your schedule and what you're facing and whether I would want one of your wide receivers in a deal, and it's been real bad. Like, And the games that he was okay in was just okay. It was mm-hmm. like – and Cooper's been really, really good. Yeah. And he's still going to get all the targets because there ain't nobody else to throw to. So that would be a tough one. Yeah, I've got Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I know. He had one catch last week. You had to have been thrilled. Uh, the Seahawks. The You're C- looking at best schedules. I'm looking at best schedules now. The Seahawks have an amazing run. It, the the You can't get much better than this. In fact, if you were to say, what's the best possible chance at a, a you know, the the statistically speaking, it would be to play the 32nd, the 31st, and the 30th matchups, right? They almost get that. They're, they play the 30th, the 31st, and the 28th best defenses against wide receivers so Tyler Lockett DK Metcalf even Jackson Smith and Jigba those players I think have the potential for massive playoff performances when you've got good players and great matchups I mean you know that they're going to be on that on those weeks 
they're going to be starts you want to be making. What about mediocre players in good matchups like Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and Marvin Mims? They have How a pretty decent schedule. How dare you? Cortland Sutton <clears throat> has been a revelation. He scores touchdowns every single week and is the definition of greatness. It didn't sound right. No, no, it didn't. I mean, he's, he's not that good. <laughs> yards, 53, 29, 76, 43. Yeah, but let 13. me read you touchdowns. I know. One, 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 one. I mean, he is the go-to guy. One. I think Sutton's, Sutton's good. Yeah. Sutton I, might be a, a sneaky ad, um, but not Judy. And, you know, CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Cooks, they have a great end-of-season schedule. Buffalo, Miami, Detroit, Hollywood Brown, you mentioned it, Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, Washington, then New Orleans and the Giants. Nice way to start the playoffs. If, if Matthew Stafford's back, that'll be a really – under the radar, league winning type of addition. Yeah, you could see Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua taking people to titles if if you get to the playoffs with them. And yeah. the the yeah. Texans, the Texans as well. We talked about that Texans Titans matchup, but the Titans are not good against wide receivers, and the Texans have. This is why I'm not that afraid of C.J. Stroud, because where the Titans get beat is the only place the Texans go. Like Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Noah Brown, even Robert Woods, they're going to be able to get theirs against the Titans. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, other names to mention, Deontay Johnson and Pickens have nice uh, a nice situation to end the year. The Zay Flowers, OBJ Bateman, you know, I, I, I don't care that much about that. Do you? No, no. The, you can't trust the Ravens. The matchups are irrelevant. Good matchup, bad matchup. I, I don't think you could trust starting Ravens wide receivers right now. They run the ball too well, and Mark Andrews is their primary target. I, I, we, we, you said his name, but I think that <clears throat> if there's one like target that I think is sneaky and easily acquirable after this last week, it would be Deontay Johnson. I think that the the Indianapolis Colts, the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Seattle Seahawks are all good offenses that can score on the Steelers and bad defenses that can be thrown on. So Deontay Johnson, to me, is an affordable, acquirable, really good baseline guy through the playoffs. I'll have to look into that. I hate you. Uh, tight ends. Best schedules, Jake Ferguson. Oh, David you don't say. David Njoku, although the Watson injury maybe throws it out the window. Gerald Everett, he's not getting enough action for me to care. Pat Fryermuth, it's pretty good. Fryermuth, Fryermuth is 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 interesting because you could get him on waivers today. He's, right, he's been sitting there while he's on IR. If if you know, you should be checking. And the fact that he, they opened his window right away, they say he's going to practice or play this week. I I have a waiver claim in on. I wondered, Pat did you Fryermuth. spend Fab? No. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I did a non-fab bid as well. Yeah, he's worth a roster spot, and with his playoff uh, matchups coming up, I would I would certainly add him to the roster if you've got a burnable spot. Tight ends with bad schedules and the begging question of does it matter to you? Dalton Schultz, terrible, the worst. Basically, real, real bad. George Kittle, real, real bad for two weeks with Arizona and Baltimore. Evan Ingram, not good, three Negative matchups. Dallas Goddard not healthy right now and doesn't have a good matchups. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have good matchups coming up. And then Cole Komet, who look, it's fun to kind of like hope for Cole Komet. You got to play Cleveland in the first week of the fantasy playoffs. Yeah, you're not. Who's gonna, the number one against tight ends? You're not going to want to start uh, him. Cole Komet and Dalton Schultz. These guys have been on fire. If you're on the way to the playoffs and you can turn those into, you know, uh, other. You know, turn Meaningful. him into Jake yeah. Ferguson. Um, I would much rather have Jake Ferguson than Cole Komet or Dalton Schultz. And that seems like with what those two players have done right now today, Dalton Schultz and Cole Komet, you can get a trade done with those guys for Ferguson. Not Maybe not straight up. Maybe the fantasy manager is aware of the playoff schedule or just likes Ferguson better. Uh, I like Ferguson better than Schultz and Komet. But, so, you know, I think if you ask 10 people to put those three guys in order, you'd get – three different orders a lot um you pair up schultz or Komet with someone for ferg daddy and i think you can get that deal done the defenses you want to target the jets they play miami washington cleveland and well, they're great you know 
Yeah, that one is. Um, yeah, they're great, obviously. But I, I man, Miami, uh, Miami, Miami, Miami in and one. Miami in week one is a little nerve wracking. That that is, and and you maybe might, you stack them with another defense. Yeah, that's that's what you usually want to do. Is you don't you don't look for you don't look for three weeks always. You know, you 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 look at what who has the best schedules for the first week of the playoffs for the second week, and you grab a couple of defenses. But the Jets, those second two weeks against Sam Howell and Dorian Thompson Robinson or whoever the quarterback's going to be in that final week, that that's going to win. That's going to score so many points. Uh, a defense that has really not put up fantasy points this year, but I am targeting for one specific matchup is the Philadelphia Eagles, because they play the New York Football Giants. They do it at home, mm -hmm. and they do it in Week 16. I traded for them yesterday because I am targeting that single week against the Giants because I can't wait. Uh, they have a good they, – they're okay, Seattle, Arizona on the front and back of that, but that's the target. The Chiefs, New England and Las Vegas, those are amazing. Like, you can figure it out in, in your championship week if you get those first two, which I'm sure is why you have them on your roster. Yes, and uh, the Chiefs are my favorite – well, no, the Browns are probably my favorite defense, although I wonder how much the quarterback change hurts their defense with shorter fields and, and issues like that. But outside of that, the Chiefs' defense has been so good for fantasy. They are they are turning the ball over. They are scoring touchdowns. They are sacking the quarterback. Um, you want Aiden O'Connell to go into uh, Arrowhead in Week 16 yeah. and take on the Chiefs? Yeah, I would love that. Um, and I would love to play against Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi. And oh, yeah. the stretch run before then, you get Aiden O'Connell again next week. You also get Jordan Love. Um, so there, there's a, a handful of great matchups from here to the end of the, the playoffs with the Chiefs. Uh, the Browns have are arguably the best opportunity because they got two home games against Chicago and the Jets. And then Houston in between, which is fine because they're, they're an elite defense. The sneakiest one's the Falcons to me because you play Carolina and the Falcons defense is all right. And you play Chicago in the final week. And you play Gardner Minshew in between. So yeah. that's that's not bad if you don't have a top option. And they're they're out on waivers. So yeah. uh Falcons are a good pickup if you're preparing for for the playoffs. And I have three defenses. Like just you know, we we've talked about this a lot. Like that I have three on my roster. It's okay to hold multiples if you feel like you're deep enough elsewhere. This is the time of year where you you probably it matters. Need to do. I had three defenses on my roster last week. I had to drop one of them, but um, you look at your not just playoffs. Playoffs are uh, pretty far away for this is the playoff primer, so we're looking at them. But if I'm in my league, I'm looking at who do I play next week. I'm always one week ahead on defenses. I'm picking up whoever's going to. I know who my defense is going to be next week. Hundred percent and. Currently, I think I, I think I paired them perfectly, depending on how waivers went through today, to where I think I've got my, my guys set for the rest of the year. I think the Chiefs and the Jacksonville Jaguars pair perfectly going you, forward. You did, uh, you 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 got the Minnesota Vikings. Ooh, yes, perfect. The Vikings they have play, a great stretch run. Um, for you're looking at like Chicago, Las Vegas. Yep. Or, okay. Chicago, Las Vegas. Yep. They they were the team that pairs perfectly with the Chiefs. You did. Uh, you picked them up. So there you go. Pat Fryermuth went for twenty fab in our league. 20. Wow. I did not get him with my zero bid. Mm -hmm. Me Pretty neither. Interesting. Um. Okay. Well, that is going to do it for today's episode. A reminder. We have the strength of schedule tool up on the website. For supporters at jointhefoot.com, updated weekly. Um, Brooks, do you have any other news or are there any other quarterback changes that I have to worry about live on the air? No changes. No, mm. Not seeing anything. I just really – I want to ask you guys about the Cowboys defense yeah, that was in what playoff I, week. I was just going to bring it does up. that concern because, you? Yes. It does concern me because it's the reason I didn't spend on them on Fab uh, a couple weeks ago. And, and the Cowboys defense has obviously been outrageously good. Uh, they've they've won you some weeks. They are good in real life. Yeah, and they could surprise those weeks for sure. But I don't want them. I would much rather have an amalgamation of other of, of these other teams we talked about. It's Their Buffalo, schedule, Miami, Detroit. Buffalo on the road, Miami on the road, and then Detroit. Like those are scorers. Yeah, that I I don't want to play the Cowboys defense. So that's the that's the one elite defense that you're holding on to right now. We that, just I mean you could go swap them for one of these other ones. You you can and you should. There you go. All right, tomorrow we have starts of the week, the matchup previews and a whole lot more. Friday the fantasy face off, wheel of shame, and uh hopefully we'll reflect on a very good Thursday night football game 
That is my that is my desire. I'm going to put that out there that I enjoy the football on Thursday. Maybe that'll happen. I'm hoping. Hope so. All right, thanks for tuning in. Catch you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.